right, Brewing Feed here. I'm here with four beers that I brewed during the quarantine. All of these beers, well, three of these beers were brewed just for the quarantine here in my homebrew garage. Uh, Brewing Feed, as you know, or maybe you don't know, is setting up a five barrel brew house about 15 miles north of here. Um, that's on hold right now, but while we're waiting to do that, we decided to brew some brand new recipes. So that would be the first three. Um, and then one of our most popular beers decided to brew that here as well. So all of these beers are brewed just for the quarantine of 2020. Uh, so let's get into it. Um, the first beer, I'm going from light to dark. The first beer I have is a Belgian white ale called Quarantine Ale. Uh, this beer is 4% uh, ABV. It is 20 IBUs, and it's a Belgian white ale brewed with coriander and uh, orange peel. Uh, the second beer is In The House Session IPA. Uh, it's also 4% ABV. Um, it's uh, brewed with orange peel, ton of hops. It's, uh, 40, it's 40 IBUs. Uh, so the Belgian white ale was 20, this one's 40 IBUs. Uh, so that's the In The House Session IPA. Then we got the Bitter, Iso Bitter, Bitter Isolation English Bitter. The Bitter Isolation English Bitter was brewed with dates and honey. Um, I wanted an English Bitter, but I wanted something with some flavor. I also wanted something lower in ABVs that, you know, I know that has good flavor. And English Bitter is the way to go. Uh, this one's 5.5% um, ABV and 45 IBUs. So English Bitter uh, called Bitter Isolation brewed with honey and dates. And then I have the, a beer that is legendary in the homebrew in the homebrew world. Um, it's called Dark Heart Stout. Dark Heart Stout is a Russian Imperial Stout brewed with um, coconut nib, cocoa nibs, cinnamon, vanilla, and usually brewed with ghost peppers. But this time I brewed it with uh, habanero because that's all I had. I had some habanero left over from my backyard farm from last year that were frozen, um, and I added those. So big Russian Imperial Stout. Um, you'll notice the first three beers are 4% ABV or lower. Most of the beers that I brew um, when I'm home brewing are lower in ABV because I don't like to have a lot of beer uh, sitting around the house that's high in ABVs. Uh, ABV. Uh, so usually I'm 5% I'm or less when I brew beers at home, um, but I, I had to brew the Russian Imperial Stout again. My wife loves it. It's a delicious beer. It's a nice sipper. Uh, so let's get into this. So when you're tasting beers, what you want to do uh, is you want to have a system. You want to know what components of the beer you're tasting. Um, in this case, there's four or five different things you want to taste for. There's appearance, aroma, flavor, an aftertaste. Uh, what is the overall palate? And what, what is your overall impression of the beer? What's the balance and drinkability of the beer? So you want to have some kind of a score sheet. You also uh, want to have something to clear your palate with. In my case, I got bread. <laughs> I didn't have what is recommended, which is uh, unsalted crackers. Uh, you want to have something like this to eat after each beer to clear your palate. And I also have a cup of water here. Uh, this water is used to also cleanse your palate. Um, so when you're drinking different beers, you can cleanse your palate with the bread or the crackers. And then uh, have a swig of water just to clear your palate for the next beer. Um, you also want a bucket. You need a bucket because uh, what you're going to do with this is if I'm not going to use it, but if I was sampling a lot of beer, obviously you want to be sitting up drinking a bunch of beer all day. You're going to start losing your concentration. Um, and so what a lot of people do is they'll drink the beer, they'll swish it around, they'll spit it out. Um, they might drink a little bit, but you know, just to get, make sure they get the flavor, they're gonna, um, they're gonna spit it out. So first beer is um, Quarantine Ale. It's a Belgian white ale brewed with uh, coriander and orange peel. Uh, first thing you wanna do with a beer is you wanna have a white piece of paper so you can hold the beer up to the light and put a white piece of paper behind it because you don't want the light to distort the color. Um, and that's the first thing you'll be looking for is what's the color of the beer? And there's a spectrum scale. Uh, most judges will have it in front of them. You can see, um, looking at the scale, this beer is about a six on the SRM scale. And SRM scale is basically a measure of color. If you can see that, 
um, you can see that there's a uh, color scale on this score sheet that uh, tells you the different SRM so you can hold the beer up to it. Uh, first thing you want to do when you sample a beer is you want to get the aroma. You want to, so I've already judged the color. You want it now as far as tasting, you want to get the aroma. So you want to smell it. You want to breathe out with your mouth, swirl the bill around a little bit, and just get that beer to open up. The CO2 in there is going to um, start to come out of the beer, and that's going to push some of the flavors out and let you smell it. So um, your score sheet's going to have a bunch of different characteristics of aroma. Um, it's going to have the, alco the alcohol aroma, hops, malt, the esters, uh, the fennels. All those different things are going to be on your score sheet. Um, so what I'm getting out of this beer is a little bit of uh, fruitiness, um, a little bit of breadiness, um, more like bread flour kind of flavor or smell or aroma. Um, so that's what you get when you taste these beers. So let's go ahead and go with the next step, which is what is the flavor of the beer? So after you've judged the aroma of the beer based on the different adjectives that they give you, you want to go with what's the flavor? So you want to swirl the beer around in your mouth a little bit, let it hit all the different parts of your palate. And what you're tasting is what does it taste like when you first sip it and then also when you finish swallowing the beer or if you spit it out, you're gonna get an aftertaste. So you're judging all of that, basically the full sip from the front end to the back end. Um, I'll get another sip. So I'm getting a little bit of, um, I would say, cloviness. Cloviness, maybe a hint hit the like banana like flavor but not real not like a banana like sweet but just that that flavor and some cloves um, I'm getting a lot of uh, spiciness in this beer because it's brewed with Belgian Belgian yeast uh, which adds a spicy character to the beer imagine a slight hint of, of, of like black pepper so that's how you sample that's how you go through the full sip of the beer um, that's a good beer Good aroma, uh, it's to taste. I would say on the palate, the palate you're gonna be judging the astringency, the body, um, the carbonation of the beer. This one's lightly carbonated. Um, it's not, it's, it's low on astringency because it's not a high alcohol beer, it's only 4%. Um, and then the, the and on, the, um, on the finish, um, I'm getting pretty much a little bit of bitterness. I can taste some of the bitterness in the hops on the finish. It lingers on my tongue a little bit, uh, but it's not harsh. It's just there. You know that there's hops in this beer. The next beer um, is In The House Session IPA. Disclaimer on this beer, or a disclaimer on this beer is it didn't come out exactly the way I wanted it to on the nose. Everything else came out perfect. It, exactly what I was expecting in this beer. I wanted something light and bright, um, citrusy um, and, and hoppy. It's a it's only 40 it's only 40 IBUs, but it's also only 4% ABV. So there's no there's no residual malt sweetness to balance it out. And without that, you get a perception of bitterness that you um, you would normally get if the beer had higher ABVs. Um, so at only 40 IBUs, it is a it is a fairly hoppy beer. So on the nose, the re I didn't dry hop this beer like I wanted it to. That's why it didn't come out fully like I wanted it to. So on the nose, I'm getting uh, a little bit of grassiness, probably from the hops. Um, had I dry hopped this beer, the, the aroma from the dry hop um, hops would have taken over that smell. I would have gotten more of a, um, a hoppy aroma, but I don't get that here. So I was disappointed in that. Um, I do get a little bit of a, lot, a little bit of citrus because this thing was this beer was brewed with orange peel. Um, this beer is hoppy from the front end to the back end, and it ends with a pleasant bitterness that is really is strong, um, but it's pleasant. It just kind of emerges at the end of the end of the end of the sip, and then it fades away gradually. 
Um, so what will happen is as you drink this beer, you'll, you'll, it'll, it'll actually make you want to drink more of it because that harsh bitterness on the back end will make you want to cleanse it off. Oh, and I'm not, um, I'm not cleansing between each, um, I'm not going to cleanse my palate between each um, sip because I already know what these beers taste like. But, so that's, the, um, that's in the house Session IPA, 4% ABV, a very hoppy Session IPA brewed with orange peel. Um, and this one is the most interesting beer I brewed. Well, it's the second most interesting, but it's the, it's the most interesting beer that I brewed of the new recipes that I brewed. This one is an English bitter called it, um, Bitter Isolation English Bitter. Uh, it's 5.5% ABV um, with 45 IBUs and brewed with dates and honey. The dates and the honey went in in the last 10 minutes of the boil. I didn't really want to. I didn't really want to cook all of all of the honey and the dates. I just wanted them to sanitize um, or sterilize uh, and get that flavor in there. Um, the honey. It's not, it doesn't have honey-like sweetness to it, but the dates did come through very well. It is a very malty beer because um, I brewed it with some crystal malt. Crystal malt basically gives your beer a caramel-like flavor. Uh, so let's go get into this one. Strong, strong flavors of dates on the, in the aroma or, or smell, of a, smell of dates in the aroma. Uh, caramel, hints of caramel. Oh, yeah, so hints of caramel and dates all in the nose of this beer. Um, I can smell some of the hops because this beer is a little, this beer is hoppy too. It's 45 IBUs, which wouldn't really be hoppy, but except it's only a 5.5% ABV beer. Crazy bit. The bitterness is balanced out by the. Um, a little bit of residual malty sweetness from this beer because of the grain bill that I use, but also because it's a little bit higher in ABVs. Um, and the bitterness climb, creeps up on you on the, on the, in the middle of the sip and on the back end of the sip, but the flavor of dates kind of washes it all out, makes it very well balanced. This, this beer came out exactly like, it didn't come out exactly like I wanted it to, it came out better than I expected it to. So that's bitter isolation, um, English bitter. And the last beer, matter of fact, let me, let me go ahead and get a little bit of this action. Yeah, that does clear your palate. Um, Dark Heart Stout. Dark Heart Stout is actually my attempt at making a beer that I could never find. Um, Westbrook Brewing Company down in South Carolina, they make a beer called uh, Mexican Cake, um, and I could never find it, but I could always get to see a bottle, and I saw what the ingredients were, and I said, well, let me make this beer, and I said, I'm going to I'm gonna make an Imperial Stout, and I'm going to dose it with cocoa nibs, cinnamon, vanilla, and ghost pepper, because I think Westbrook uses um, habanero. Um, it's typically made with ghost pepper, but this time it's made with habaneros, because all I had was habaneros. Um, a friend of mine who's real in the beer, he's a beer nerd, he said, the only thing I wish that beer had was more body. So I, I gave this beer a little bit more body than theirs. Um, and so it's, it's similar to Mexican cake, but with more body. Um, it's, so it's not as, it's, I wouldn't say their beer is thin. It's not thin, it's, I mean, it's, not, it's not a thin stout, but as far as the body goes, but um, this one has a little bit more mouthfeel, which I think makes it a better beer. Um, so smell this one, the aroma. Ridiculous amounts of chocolate notes on this one. I use chocolate malts, I use roasted malts, which are dark roasted malts that give the beer a roasty-like flavor, kind of like coffee. Um, the chocolate malt gives it a roasty-like flavor, but a little bit more like chocolate. And I also put some, I also conditioned this beer on real cocoa nibs which gives it strong hints of chocolate on the nose. Vanilla, um, I don't, I, vanilla, too much vanilla could be cloy or annoying or um, annoying basically, a cloy, makes you, make it sickening. 
if you put too much vanilla in the beer. So I put just enough vanilla in there so you can taste it and smell it, but it doesn't overwhelm or take over the flavor. In fact, the goal with this beer is for every ingredient to be evenly distributed throughout the sip when you're tasting it. I don't want people to go, oh, it's too much of this or too much of that. I want it to be very well balanced. So even though it has either ghost pepper or habanero in it, it's not spicy spicy, it's warming, I guess you could call it. So let's go ahead and stand this one. The cinnamon, so the cinnamon is not as <coughs> strong on the nose when you smell it, but you can definitely taste the cinnamon that's in this beer. You can, um, you can taste the vanilla and the cocoa nibs, well the chocolate, it's all in there. It's um, Mexican cake. So Mexican cake is kind of like a Mexican hot chocolate. If you've ever had Mexican hot chocolate, uh, similar kind of profile. But it's a very good beer. The heat from the habanero and the ghost pepper, it doesn't hit you till like the third or fourth sip that you're drinking a beer that has hot peppers in it. So um, that's the last of the quarantine flight beers that I've made. Um, I, I, you know, being quarantined, you, you're, you're a brewer, you're, you're, I was spending most of my time helping build the brew house that's being built, um, also building out our spice and sauce brand, add a lot of different ingredients to that, but I said I gotta brew, I need to be around a brew house. So I decided to make these three recipes, um, quarantine ale, um, in the house session IPA, um, and then the uh, Bitter Isolation English Bitter. So hopefully you learned a little bit today. Uh, I am not very good at these things as far as presenting, but I um, thought I'd explain to my fans, followers, customers, whoever, um, what I was doing during the quarantine um, and what I came up with. So that's all I got. And the last thing I gotta say is, brew strong and feed well. Thank you.